What's up my comic comrades? Today we kick off the first episode of October, aka the first episode of Villains Month here on Variant. As longtime watchers of the channel know, every October we dedicate to the villains of comics and fiction, as it's our way of counting down and celebrating Halloween, which is easily one of my favorite holidays. I mean, who doesn't like monsters and candy? In any case, we already have all of Villains Month mapped out, and trust me, I think we have some awesome content in store for this month, including issue two of Batman 3 Jokers coming out this Sunday, and the history of the Hobgoblin next Wednesday. But today we're kicking off Villains Month with the origin of probably the most well-known terrorist organization in all of comics, thanks to the MCU. And that would be Hydra. It's, it's fine, it's fine, it's nothing. Hydra first appeared in Strange Tales issue 135 in August of 1965, and they were created by comic book legends Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. I've said it before, but it's kind of like, what didn't Stan Lee and Jack Kirby create for Marvel? It would literally be easier to name all the stuff they didn't create for Marvel than the stuff they did create for them. Anyway, like I mentioned a moment ago, Hydra is a terrorist organization appearing within the Marvel Universe. But what a lot of people may not know is that the name Hydra was actually taken from the mythical creature Lernaean Hydra, which is actually a mythical multi-headed serpent or water monster from Roman and Greek mythology. But not only was Hydra named after said serpent, their motto actually refers to the myth of the Hydra. As we've all read in the comics and heard in the movies, their motto goes as follows. If a head is cut off, two more shall take its place. Now that's the part that refers to the Hydra, but their full motto goes as follows. Hail Hydra, immortal Hydra, we shall never be destroyed. Cut off a limb, and two more shall take its place. We serve none but the master, as the world shall soon serve us. Hail Hydra. That's not cultish or evil at all. Anyway, they took this motto from the serpent to show the organization's resilience and growing strength in numbers in the face of resistance. It's also why their logo is serpent inspired. Although one could argue it looks like octopus legs, but that's neither here nor there. The point is, it's a badass looking logo. In any case, Hydra has been around for several millennia. Not a millennia, several millennia. They're basically old as dirt, but they didn't always exist in the way we know them now. You see, the organization started, or some version of it has existed, in different civilizations, such as Egypt, all the way to Imperial China. Even in places like the United States of America, and of course, Nazi Germany. But the Hydra we know from the comics and even the MCU was created out of the remnants of Imperial Japan and Nazi Germany. Now like most things in life, things change over the years, and Hydra was no exception. It's ideology has changed over the decades. However, its methodology has been extremely consistent, and that's mainly because their methodology is one of elitism and supremacy, aka controlling the world, molding it into what they deem fit. Now, as I've already mentioned, Hydra has gone through many incarnations over the years within Marvel continuity, and with that, they've been under different leadership a bunch of times. But the most notable leader of Hydra and person credited for the modern creation we know within the Marvel Universe is Baron Wolfgang von Strucker, aka the right-hand man to Red Skull. This Nazi spy master created this version of the terrorist organization after the fall of the Axis powers in World War II. For those of you who need a little history recap, the Axis powers would be Japan, Italy, and Germany, while the Allied forces would be America, Britain, the Soviet Union, and France. The more you know. Strucker's Hydra would recruit from the remnants of the Nazi military forces and acquired alien technologies that would advance its resources beyond those that most governments had on Earth. Strucker being an evil genius and spy master would then start building Hydra's forces quietly over the next couple of decades. Now I know what some of you may be thinking at this point. What about the Red Skull? I thought he was closely tied to Hydra. And he is. He's even been the Supreme Hydra, aka their leader. How it basically broke down was you had Hitler, the true boss of them all, then the Red Skull, followed by von Strucker. Essentially, they were the Nazi trinity if you want to look at it that way. The crazy part is even though Hitler was true top dog and took great pride in the monster that he created with the Red Skull, Hitler himself was even scared of the Red Skull as he thought of him as a darker version of himself. Long story short, without getting too confusing and into the weeds, during World War II, Strucker birthed the first modern incarnation of Hydra as his personal paramilitary force with its very existence kept secret from Hitler. Then around 1943, Hitler ordered the death of Baron von Strucker by the hands of Red Skull because of his repeated failures. But Red Skull did the complete opposite as he sought opportunity to rebuild another army of his own with the help of Strucker. That being the case, Skull let him live and escape to Germany. You see, being Hitler's right-hand man, Red Skull saw the coming fall of Hitler, so he sought to make an alternative power base. So the Red Skull sent Strucker to Japan to form an organization. There, Strucker joined forces with the Hand and an underground movement. This later turned into Hydra, which Baron became Supreme Hydra, aka leader of this version of Hydra, as well as being Red Skull's right-hand man. And that, my friends, is Hydra's origin, at least the modern and most popular origin we know that's tied to Red Skull and Strucker. To tell you the truth, if you really get into Hydra's lineage in great detail, it's super confusing, because as I always say, comic books. Sometimes they're their own worst enemy 
enemies with making things confusing, like with time travel, being frozen, and then coming back years later. It's all kind of crazy. But in any case, everything I told you was the short and sweet version. Now, obviously, most recently, we had the Secret Empire event, which made Captain America Hydra Supreme. That's right. It made good old red, white, and blue Captain America leader of Hydra. Not only that, we were led to believe he was a sleeper agent for Hydra all these years. It wasn't like he just one day decided to fight for Hydra. He was always on their side. How it all went down is we find out that S.H.I.E.L.D. made a cosmic cube that had become sentient. Once this happened, Red Skull was able to take control of this sentient cosmic cube, which was now in the form of a little girl called Kobik. Skull was able to convince Kobik that Hydra's ideologies was the right way. Because of this, Red Skull was able to make the cosmic cube and or Kobik alter reality, changing Steve Rogers' past, making him be a sleeper agent for Hydra. With reality now rewritten, we see Hydra Steve Rogers plot for him and Hydra to take over the United States and the world and eventually the universe with the Cosmic Cube. But eventually the sentient Cosmic Cube became afraid of what the world was like with Hydra ruling it. Because of this, it created something called the Vanishing Point, which is where the memory of heroes go, such as Captain America before he turned heel. Heel means bad guy, it's a wrestling term, and babyface means good guy, it's a wrestling term as well but that's neither here nor there. I just like wrestling. Long story short, this memory of the original Captain America was given a physical body at the end of Secret Empire, giving us back our good old star-spangled hero once again. With the classic Captain America back wielding his shield and Mjolnir, mind you, he would defeat Hydra Supreme Captain America and make everything right in the world once again. We had to at least touch on this event because it made Captain America leader of Hydra, and today's episode is all about Hydra. It's a very polarizing story. We actually never covered the full Secret Empire storyline on the channel, but let us know if you want us to do that in the comment section below. At this point in the episode is where I would talk about powers and abilities, but for Hydra, we're going to focus on their technology. Their technology is extremely advanced, based in part with alien technology discovered by Von Strucker in 1944. Because of this, Hydra uses an array of advanced vehicles and devices. This also translates over to their weapons, but they also use conventional vehicles and weapons as well. As for their uniforms, Hydra agents are given cowl jumpsuits, which have had several designs over the years. But their original jumpsuits were yellow and green with an H design. But again, their outfits have changed a bunch of times. Now, if you're looking for some good Hydra reading recommendations, check out Shield by Steranko, the complete collection, Captain America vs. Hydra in Captain America issues 111 through 113. Then you also have Captain America issues 144 through 148, which reveals Red Skull's ties to Hydra. You also have Shield Hydra Reborn, and most recently, the Secret Empire storyline. That should be more than enough to get you all started. And that brings today's episode of Variant to a close. But if you like today's video, check out this one right here. And if you like our channel, you like our videos, or you just like staring at my face, Subscribe, like, and comment. It helps us out. But other than that, I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.